friends, my name is Eric, this is Mellow7 Gaming, we are playing Celeste, a crown of the Magister, and last episode we spent like 87 hours creating our party. So we created four characters, we are now going to select those characters, um, and we are going to dive into the actual game. So we created Bjorn Blackshield, uh, well Celia Hawk here, that's our fighter, uh, let's select her. We created Bjorn Blackshield, our hill cleric uh, of, uh, our hill cleric dwarf hill dwarf cleric there we go um we created a spy our intrepid halfling owen white sail and we created our kind of snooty uh academic mage tegan sonata and i had a great time doing it if you haven't seen that episode go back and watch it it's a little bit long at least watch through making bjorn the first character we make um, because I think it's important to see the character generation system, character creation system of any role-playing game. And this one so far has hit the nail on the head. It's so good. So let's go ahead and start uh, the game, see what we got going for us. Before the Cataclysm, there were no gods on Celasta. No humans either. Then, the rift opened. Some say it was a magical accident. Or the work of an evil god. No one knows for sure. The cataclysm destroyed the old High Elf Empire. Manakalan, they called it. And twisted the land beyond recognition. Now, the brave and the foolish go there in search of ancient treasures. But something is happening deep in those badlands. Oh, yeah. Whatever it is, it can't be good. Good opening. All right, 1024 AC is a time of political tension between the Principality of Mazgrath and its neighbors. The Legacy Council stands as a neutral organization with representatives of from all the Eastern Kingdoms, is issued a call for hired adventurers to bolster its efforts to explore the perilous Badlands. A valiant group gathers at the Gravekeeper's Cask Inn, ready to take up the challenge. By the way, I just, while I was waiting for it to load, thought of a great logo, because I've been kind of rethinking about doing my logo. I've always used the, the, the Bomber Baron. Short answer, Mellow7 was my grandfather's call sign when he was uh, with Strategic Air Command. Um, that was one of the, the the bombers he was in. That was its call sign. And uh, in World War II, he was part of the um, Jungle Air Force is what it was called, uh, the Bomber Barons. And the Bomber Baron was their symbol. So the two, in my mind, uh, both represent my grandfather, and that's where they, they came from. Um, but, uh, you know, it'd be nice to have some little more gaming. Anyway, I thought about doing a number seven for the Mellow Seven on a six-sided dice. So it might be might be three dots in the middle flanked by two dots and two dots similar to the five except with three there um so a seven on a six-sided die for my metal seven i think it's a winner you may even see it it may it may have already shown up on a, th on, a on a thumbnail by the point time you see this but um, i just now thought of it um nothing new with the game but it's how my head works this beer tastes like donkey piss not that i'm complaining Hope I'm not too late. Ran into a bit of trouble on the way here. Sit, relax. Perhaps you'd enjoy a pint of this obnoxious ale. If you're here for the council job, get in line. Though if this Lord Karen doesn't show up soon, I may go looking for him. Another round, barkeeper. Four of your finest flagons of donkey piss, please. Looks like you've been waiting here a while. Indeed. You mentioned something about some trouble. Would you care to elaborate? Well, I was making my way here when three bandits leapt out of the bushes with crossbows. They dragged me off to some decrepit prison and tossed me in a filthy cell that smelled of rat piss. Don't know what was holding the place up. <laughs> so this is our, probably our tutorial mission. Every good adventure should start in a tavern. And if we can start in a tavern with a so no shit there I was story, so much the better. All right. 
Um, is there like an alt, something we can hold down? All right, find a way out. Um, conversation recorded. Oh, okay, so we can go back and read the conversation. All right, select your character by clicking on the character in the 3D view or the portrait. Select the whole party. Use the select all button at the bottom of the portrait display. Okay, we only have one character, so maybe it doesn't show up right now. Um, you can also drag a rectangle, move left click on destination. Yep, we did that. Uh, right click and drag to rotate the camera. You can also rotate using uh, the Q and E or the compasses there, WASD to move the camera around. Okay, understood. So, camera, or we can. Uh, I think I prefer the QE, to be honest. I think they're a little bit more responsive. Um, attack, cast spell, cautious. Yeah, I think we go cautious at this point, right? I think that makes sense. Um, and it puts a little hood over us to let us know. Okay, we don't have any gr weapon groups to uh, flip between, so we're okay there. Um, is there anything over here? I don't even click on. It says I can't move there, but let's see if we perceive something. Okay, no. Nothing. Can we move the camera down? No, so we're stuck with just kind of this view. We can move in and out? Yeah, we can. Okay, so we can get in quite a bit, but we can't get out very far. Okay, that's fine. All right, click on the journal button to open your quest log. This will give you more information on your current objectives along with useful context. Okay. Um, journal's down over here. Okay. Note the journal contains much more information than the quest log. Okay. Uh, log in current objective, which must be completed in order to move the quest forward. Gives you hints and context. All right. So we can go to journal, and there's our, our gravekeeper's... Uh, conversation adventure begins um oh let's scroll up here there we go relationship increase relationship with antiquarians increased plus 15 status is now 15 hmm that must be because of our our wizard would be my guess all right so that's our adventure log our quest log is here find a way out there must be some way out there and we have a beastery we have factions okay our antiquarians um, principality, they have sympathy for us as well. Indifferent for the Arcanum, Scavengers, Circle of Danatar, and the Tower of Knowledge. Okay. Uh, and then we've got the tutorial. All right. So we're just trying to get out of here. Um, but I wouldn't mind finding some loot on the way out. I don't think we're going to keep it. But you never know when you need to find that one weapon. Nothing there. Oh, whoops. We can go out that way. Uh, that was the way we needed to go. Okay. All right. I'm there. I'm with you. To crawl through a hole, click uh, the other side. You can get a better view by rotating the camera. We'll automatically kneel crawl. Okay. I think they automatically jump as well. Um, after moving the camera around to examine your surroundings, you can center the character, center on the character and follow them. Uh, double click the character's portrait or press tab. Okay. So that will automatically bring in. All right, and we're automatically going to crawl through that hole. Nice. Is there a, I'm sure they're going to take it to us. Is there can we get into that? No path to destination, no. Nothing there. Looks like that might be the door out. Hmm. Let's see what's back here. Oh, look at that. All right. Highlighted act elements are interactive. Okay, so now we see some of that. Uh, cursor indicates an action. We performed opening, pushing, activating, lock, picking. An action requires a dice roll. The difficulty class will be displayed. All right. So uh, we just push this object. And then we can crawl through. All right. Um, 
now we're in the cave, according to all that. We just have to figure out how to get out of the cave. Uh, looks like that route, so maybe we can... So if I climb to here, and then I will jump up to there, or climb to there? All right, to jump or climb, simply click on a destination. Depending on character strength and proficiency with athletics, you can jump and climb between two and five cells. You can always jump over two cells, drop down three cells, and climb up one cell, or climb up easy surfaces like rope ladders. Okay. Um, character strength below 15 and no proficiency cannot jump far enough to reach the chest. A fighter with a strength of 15 to 20 can jump across three. So can a character with a strength of... Okay, so essentially athletics gives you an extra bonus or an extra level of jumping that you can get to. Okay. Uh, critical path is always open to characters without superior physical abilities. However, optional loot is sometimes harder to reach. Okay. So, um... I can jump to there. I can climb to there. Ah, uh, that's the loot. So we can come up and maybe jump to there to get to the loot. That would be my guess. I wonder, can we... If I come back over to here, can I jump to there and then push through there? There might be a way to climb there, or it looks like I can go around there. But I'm going to try this. Nope, it's it's telling me that this is impassable. Okay, it's fine. We'll go to there. I'm good with that. You know, we're, we're figuring this stuff out as we go. So yeah, I think we're probably going to have to go around this way to get to that loot. Let us jump from here. Oh, yeah, look at that. The strength worked for us there. Did we take athletics for him, too, or acrobatics or something? I don't remember. Um, all right, we got a potion of healing. I think we loot all there. Um, do we have a... I don't see a potion spot. Okay, that's fine. Let's take a look at proficiencies really fast, though. Um... We have acrobatics. And, oh, we have athletics at two. Right? Isn't that what we needed for... Is that what it said we needed to jump? Yeah, jumping and swimming. So we get a plus two. We have a strength of 15 plus we have athletics, which should get us a reasonable jump. Okay. Good with that. Uh, and now we can push this out of... Can I not? Nope. I bet you if we were on that side... We could push it out there, and that would let us crawl through to the chest there. I bet you that's the other the other route. You have the jump, you can go there. Otherwise, you could jump from here to here, probably. That would be my guess. Um, as it is, we did just fine. Oh, there we go. We just knocked stuff over. That works, too. Although we've already been there, so I'm not really sure where we're supposed to be going now. But we may as well just verify, right? Because we come over with another character. Uh, where are we at now? You've reached a high spot above the bandits who captured you. Push the unstable wall on top of the bandits. Ah, this unstable wall. So we could come through here to get the chest, but we've already done that. So now we can do this. <laughs> Recover your equipment from the chest. All right. And there's the chest right there. That was pretty cool. I like that. Um, one of the things that Baldur's Gate did right, uh, and apparently this game is also doing right, is making the game truly three-dimensional, where jumping and climbing and height are are useful and important and rewarding, right? Um, so if you actually get higher, you get your advantage, you get your your stuff. Um, I really like that. I've been playing a lot of Genshin Impact, and that game also really does 3D very well between um, 
the ability to climb and gliders and stuff like that. You're constantly moving up and down. I think that adds a huge amount to the game, uh, and I'm really happy to see it in both Baldur's Gate uh, and in Solasta um, as far as making the map three-dimensional. I, I think that's really important um, to the game. All right, click on a chest. Everything you carry affects weight. Yeah, okay. Um, some items can stack. Uh, split stacks, drag and hold while shift. All right. All right, we've got it all now. Let's loot all. So we got some ration pouches, which I think we need for resting. Um, fifth edition has a short rest and a long rest built into the game. Um, you get some stuff back at a short rest. Some stuff has to wait for a long. Um, I believe you can only level up in this game at a rest spot. Um, it's my understanding. So uh, we'll need rations, essentially. Um, we've got a scroll of revivify. Okay. Um, we saw those in Baldur's Gate as well. Potion of healing, uh, an herbalism kit, refined oil, magnesium. I'm assuming that's for crafting. Um, so we've got a light source in one hand. I like that. If you saw my Baldur's Gate, you saw me trying to give a torch to the character, and he sheathed it with his weapon. Um, you could you could not attack with it. You could set yourself as one-handed attack, where you're just attacking with the sword and not with the offhand. But then he would put them both away at the end of the day, which was kind of silly. Um, so, is what it is. So, we've got our secondary here, our primary. I like all that. Uh, we've looked at our character. Um, if you have... Well, I mean, we, we built the character. Ah, oh, my nose really itches today. Um... But there's our character, uh, and again, I'm covering up some of the stats. There's a 15, 9, 15 up top for strength, con, dex, and con. Um, I just don't have a good place to put me yet. We'll figure it out. Um, stats there, proficiencies we looked at already. Uh, crafting, we get a crafting bonus of plus three with our herbalism kit. Oh, okay. So these are, so you can do crafting within your deal. So the poisoner's kit, which in theory our spy has, is here. Um... This is must, I don't know what this is. Some Arcana one, okay, and a scroll kit. All right, interesting. Um, so if we select that, we don't We don't have anything. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and cleric spells, right there. So nothing else for us to get. Cover your equipment, open the door. All right, let me uh, come over there. And again, nothing else is flashing, so I assume nothing else is lootable. It's a good little tutorial mission. I like that one. And nice I Let's move that trick with the wall. Glad you're no worse for wear. This council needs to get organized. They have no right to keep us waiting like this. Have another ale. It's not like you have anywhere better to be. Well, let me Fair tell enough. you my story then. I too was accosted on the way here, but I faced my foes head on. Let's hear it then. Don't be shy. I like this. Everybody gets kind of their own little backstory going into the party. It's good. It's truly good. So this will get it. This will teach us combat. A battle starts. Okay, we've got our um, our rolls here. They got sevens. We got a nineteen. We rolled eighteen plus one. They rolled a seven. Move to the point in the yellow area. Uh, moving to the point in the yellow area uses your main action to dash. Okay, dash doubles your maximum movement for that turn. However, you cannot use your actions um, to attack or cast a spell. Remember, you can move normally. And then decide whether to dash further. Okay. Um, now, one of the things I liked in Baldur's Gate a lot um, was how they broke in the combat into your main action, your bonus action, supplemental action, whatever you want to call it, and your um, your movement. I thought they did that very, very well. I thought it was very clear. And after playing Pathfinder, it's something I really, really appreciated. Um, so my understanding here is some things that are short actions or bonus actions, whatever you want to call them, in Baldur's are long actions, such as um, shoving, uh, which is a, you can do after an attack or whatever. Um, also, you can't switch weapons. You can only switch weapons once per battle round. You can't start in a sword and shield, switch to your bow, take the shot, and switch back to your sword and shield for the extra AC. Um, so there's some small changes, um, but we'll see how they do it. Um, but I think it's important. Uh, I really do. So... We can move anywhere here, I think, under our normal movement. If we wanted to go farther than that, um, it would require a dash. Um, I'm not going to hit it right now because I'm not sure if it's going to lock me into it or not, um, and I'd rather not. So I'm just going to move. I'm just going to move up one, and then we are going. We've got to disengage. Okay, I like the fact that that's clearly written here. 
Um, Baldur's Gate uses jump and disengage as kind of the same thing. Um, we can do a shove. So we could, we could get somebody up where we could shove them off a cliff. Potentially, we could shove this guy off right here. Um, shall we try it? If we shove this guy, we do push away here. There we go. I don't know how far he fell. It doesn't show him as, uh, can we QE? Um, I don't see him. I assume he's dead, even though it still shows him up here. Um, and that will end our turn. Oh, he rolled a three. I love the dice rolls. I am, oh, we had another, we had another wolf up there. Okay, that's why. Well, we might shove him down too. To attack an enemy using your default weapon, mouse or then left click, you can also use an attack spell or switch weapon configuration. Use another weapon or ranged one. Depending on character, some special abilities are available. Try to shove an enemy back or down. Simply shove. Look at that. Uh, understood. And we're going to probably just do it again because, I mean, as long as they're going to stand there next to the edge, um, push away. Uh, that's an easy... Um, oh, wait. So let's take a look up here. Can I make this bigger? Plus. There we go. Uh, contest, uh, Celia contests Starving Wolf. Strength Athletics against Strength Athletics. Um, 13 plus 4 against 10 plus 4. So we get a plus 4 to it. We didn't get anything. Um, so we beat it 17 to 10. I love that. I love the fact that they give us all of our dice rolls. They show how everything adds up. They don't roll bonuses in, so you're not really sure what you got or what's going on. Um, I'm really, really happy with the way that works. And, of course, that's the end of our turn. He's going to get another attack. 8 plus 1. Still didn't get us. Round 3. Use dodge. Uh, at the start of your next turn, all attackers can see you have disadvantage on their rolls to hit and you have advantage on dexterity saving throws okay understood um so does dodge use you focus entirely on avoiding attacks all right so that is your full your full move at your full um action i guess not move action but your full action so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attack this time roll the 14 and then their damage was there as well i like that it gave us everything 10 plus 4 for that uh, we he did 10 damage. This is well done, guys. Um, now we need to escape the pack. Uh, is there a map? We haven't seen a map yet. Um, okay. Um, I like that. I like the 3D. Um, the see-through is a little bit disconcerting, but, I mean, I like... It means you, you'll notice if something's down here underneath the bridge, for instance, without having to spin. Um, so I understand it. I like it. Um... And I guess we just go this way. Oh, wait, I'm not really sure which way we're supposed to go. Um, cross the bridge. Okay. Climb up. Uh-oh, there's another one. To avoid an opportunity attack, ah, my nose, it's got to be allergies, it's so nice outside today, and we had rain the last couple nights, um, not a lot, just enough to make everything damp when you get up the next morning, to mean stuff is flowering, so you, to avoid an opportunity attack, use your disengage action, um, rest of your turn, uh, you can close to enemies freely without risking, you move close to enemies freely without missing any opportunities to attack, disengage uses your main action though, so you won't be able to attack or dash, okay, so, Again, it becomes a full action, um, but I think we're going to attack. We got a 13. They got a... Oh, and every dice shows up. I wonder if we can change dice. Let's hit escape. Let's go to options. I want to know if our settings, if we can change the... This game is made by gamers, okay? It is made by gamers. I don't care what anybody else says. This... Look, we've got party. Oh, wait. So we can change which ones we want. So our enemy dice right now are red. Their advantage, disadvantage are the, the the black with the gold. I remember when these first came out. These were so cool. I so like those. Um, and then we color code damage dice based to what they're doing as well. So fire is red. Acid is green. Necrotic. I like that. Um, is there a different... I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the marble blue. It's not bad. Um, is there something else... I would prefer, okay, so I don't really see anything else I hugely like past that. Um, I do like the yellows. The yellow used for anything else? 
Radiant damage. Okay. You know, we'll stick with the blue for now. Um, I hope they come with more dice. I really do. I, I think that's... I think that's a great way to customize your experience um, within the game uh, at very, very little cost. Or maybe this will be something that will be modded where you'll be able to do your own dice sets. Um, I mean, for instance, you know, even in my very limited ones, I've got kind of these, uh, you know, silver and gold or bonish um, kind of translucent y, pearlescent, I guess, type of things. I've got um, these, which are gold and silver metallic. Um, I've got a bunch of um, Tyranid dice, because I have a Tyranid army, um, and I just thought those were cool. I've got um, these military-style dice that came from, um, that's what I used the tin for, uh, Flames of War. I don't play Flames of War, but I like their dice, um, and they have different units on them, um, you know, aside from the pips. So the six will be a unit emblem, which I really like. Um, and I've still got a couple extra different types in there. So I think dice customization is a super important, great thing. I really like that. And we can show it in the dialogue. Show dialogue, die, saving throw, check, everything. Yeah, just show me the dice. Always. <laughs> Heroes only. Um, no, I like always. I think that's perfect. Uh, we're going to back out of this. And we are going to do an attack. Rolled a 14 and a 2 plus our damage, our uh, plus our strength bonus. Got us a 4. Okay. Uh, in turn. He rolled a nat 20. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you know what? That's what happens sometimes. We don't have a lot of dice. Um, and that's fine. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. So the question is, do I need to redo every story? Or are we just going to redo the fighter's story? Um... Roll attack or ability with advantage. Yeah, exactly. So when and this is new for me. This is something that doesn't exist in uh, the earlier editions. Of the you know the editions I played, um, which is uh, God, it did sixty damage. Is that really what it did on that roll? I saw it still floating up there. That's nuts. So he rolled the nat twenty and then must have just maxed out the roll. Um, that's crazy. Um, so we're back all the way to the beginning here. Um, anyway, um, when you roll with advantage. Um, you roll two dice to keep the highest. When you roll with disadvantage, you roll two dice and keep the lowest. I like it. It's a good way without doing um, positives and negatives and modifiers. You just you roll an extra dice. We rolled a 19. We did six. We did eight damage. Um, how much health does he have? He's got quite a lot. I wonder. I bet what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to disengage, come up here, and push the rock on him. Let's try this one more time. Let's see if he rolls another nat 20. He does. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. You don't have a choice in this. That is a programmed-in roll. You need to do what they told you to do or you're going to die every time. Okay. Not a huge fan of that. I'd rather it be a straight-up fight where they just say, hey, look, this guy's pretty tough. But he's not going to roll an at 20 every time, even if he's tough. So, okay. Okay, I, I get where they're coming from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say disengage. We're going to move to here. And then we end our turn. And then he rolls an at 20. Mm-hmm. Can I interact with that without a shove or a push? That's my question. Because clearly you can customize your 3D dice in the game settings. So I wonder if interaction stuff can be interacted with as a short action or a, whatever you want to call it, a bonus action. We're going to find out. Um, it's not something that's clearly obvious right now that you should be able to do that. That should as far as I'm considered. Um, so we go disengage. Then we go to here. I would think this should require a shove action. But we're going to come up here, and then we're going to push this. Okay. So because it was an interactable item, it let us do it regardless of whether we needed an action for it. Let us interact as a short action. Um, okay. What a bunch of namby pambies. You're lucky you weren't attacked by Sorax. I don't remember anyone asking your opinion. The badlands are thick with them. Shape-shifting bastards. Everyone's a critic. 
Aren't all drunks basically stupid? Zorax yes. might be legend, but orcs are quite real. And not just in the Badlands. I stumbled across a secret settlement right here in the Principality. Bullshit. I traveled here from the east and left the main highway. So no shit, there I was. By traversing the, <laughs> the views were magnificent. But I should have kept my eye on the path. Because it gave way beneath my feet, plunging me into Stygian darkness. I really like our character so far. She might be my favorite one of our characters so far. That's going to leave a mark. I like the acting. I think we did a good job with this one. Uh, you will explore deep, dark places without natural light sources. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, we should have dark vision as an elf. You can equip torches or light sources to reveal your environment. Uh, you can light flammable items such as torches or holders by interacting with them while holding a torch or casting a flaming spell like the cantrip firebolt. Oh, uh, maybe we should... Do we take Firebolt as a cantrip? Um, oh, I hit C and it brought this up. So what do we have? We have light, um, shadow armor, shadow dagger. We took poison spray. That's right. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to abort that. I don't want to cast the spell at the moment. All right. So light your way. Um, I don't really need it because if we take a look at our character... Um, Tegan... Inventory should get us there. We should see that we have dark vision and keen senses. Um, so we shouldn't need it, but I guess, you know, that's the deal. So we're going to go ahead and click over here. We've now lit our way. Light the two torches. Um, torches are over here. There's one anyway. Oh, yep. One and two. Not sure I'd do that normally. I think I would probably not let whoever know I was there know I was there. Okay. Examine the totem. I am an academic. Here. Strange. I wonder what this totem is. Now she unspokenly took Giant? So she doesn't speak orc. We did get a good ant history roll, right? Uh, it's a DT12, and we rolled a 23. So, good for us. This is one of those not super wise things, but, hmm, I wonder what's going on here. I must know. All right, character can cast healing spells like a cleric. Uh, press the cast spell button, select the spells, recover lost hit points. Um, use a potion found in nearby loot. Okay, open the inventory and right-click on the potion to get it. Um... Do I have one? Not at the moment, but we do see our scroll kit here, though, so we can use that for crafting at some point in theory. Um, crafting potion of healing, spell book. Oh, so we, oh, craft. Crafting potion of healing. So if I go to crafting, let's take a look here, and I click here, we're not seeing that as an option, but if we go back to inventory and we read it, we now should be able to cast that or create that. So if we go now to crafting, we should see a right there. So we screwed up because we should have waited and given that to our cleric. So what I'm going to do really fast is I'm going to reload. Um, I'm going to save first. <laughs> then I'm going to reload. Uh, those were auto saves. Did it not save my other one because I didn't give it a name? I wonder if that happened. Save game. Oh, I enter a file. Um, test, uh, wasted potion recipe. Save that. Okay, now let's come back and load. Yep, there it is. Let's load this one and see where that puts us. See what we can do. Because that, that's a good one, right? Now we know um, that we can give that to him. He's already got the potion, the herbalism craft. Um, so he can do that. That's pretty cool. Oh, my nose. I'm telling you. I don't have to sneeze. My nose isn't running. It just itches. It's like I've developed a, a cocaine habit all of a sudden. All right, so it automatically did that. All right. Um, 
Explore the cave further. Open the door and explore further on. Be cautious. Orcs might be around. Okay. So, I'll be cautious. Look at that. Oh, and there's ritual. What does ritual do? Cast a spell as a ritual, but it doesn't use a spell slot. Oh, okay. I like that. So if you have the time, you're not in combat or anything, you could still do, say, a, a detect magic in a, in a dungeon or something like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Uh-oh. Next story bit here. We can look down. Discretion is clearly the better part of valor in this instance. I'm an orc. Orcs apparently have, um, um, ILS, imaginary lat syndrome. I can't bring my arms down. I'm just too buff. Uh, Activating cautious mode makes you slower, but grants two benefits. Hidden objects and traps are easier to find. Anyone notices your presence, the gauge above their head, giving you time to react and return to hiding. Re remain three cells above the enemy in this mode, and you can't be detected. Ah, okay. Okay. So we're going to come here. I need to get to that. So if I come down here, I'll climb down. So one, two, three in theory. Nobody detects me. We climb up the ladder, which doesn't require any sort of uh, checks because it's a ladder. And then we go on this. Oh, and there's a chest there. That probably has the potion in it. Okay. So I'm just going to click back here. Again, I'm sneaking while I hold my candle up after having lit all the torches. Even though I see in the dark just fine. Oh, I do have only three health. Okay, so I do have three hit points, and there's the chest. Because, um, probably because of the fall. Um, I don't know that it'll matter. I think I'm going to save the potion. If we need to use it, we'll use it. Um, but I think I'm going to save it. What do we get there? We got four arrows. Okay, that's good. We can give those to the rogue. Um... And an extra torch. All right. Angry Violet. Hold alt. Uh, named after a famous wizard. Okay. Probably a crafting item. Um, what does it say here? Does it say... It just says... Well, it says craft a potion. So I guess that tells us what type of crafting we need. I was looking to see if it said anything more than that. Uh, we got a personal notebook. Okay, that's cool. Um, Adventures Wizard's Clothing. Um, we've got a couple sets of that, apparently. That's fine. All right. Like I said, I'm going to try to hang on to that potion, though. If we need to, then we'll, uh... We'll do something with it. Leave the cave, sneak past the orcs, cross the river. All right. We get our extra little run and jump. Now, here, of course, you know, we don't have much strength here. We don't have athletics here. Um, so it's a little bit more difficult for us. Oh, it did two jumps to get there. I like that. We didn't have to... We didn't have to, we didn't say, well, you can't get there because there's, you know, more than one jump. It, let's just, it just changed them together. So that's fine. Okay. Um, game auto saved. Okay. Now, in theory, we could climb up there, but we probably don't have the ability for it. So jump over there. We'll jump to there. We'll climb down. New waypoint. All right, open the map. All right, so we have a long, a long rest safe area. Sure you want to, oh, we could fast travel to it. Okay, that's fine. We don't need to do that. We're already here. Um, is it going to let us climb up there? Oh, and it's down there. Ah. Hmm. Cross the river. Well, I think I already did that. Hmm. Find a way through it. So I can't get up to there. Oops. Okay, I have a feeling 
This is going to go badly for us. All right, let's climb down there. I'm going to do a F5 quick save by chance. F5 is quick save. All right, so it got me to there. No other means of egress is apparent. Fine. I shall wait until they go. These creatures do hunt, right? Yeah, probably. Okay. To recover hit points, special abilities, it must take long rest. Do so gather your party in a nice, safe place. Have one ration of food per party member. Um, represented by a campfire. All right. Spellcasters know more spells than they can recall at a given time. Prepared spells represent those a character can use by spending spots. Okay. Um, spells that aren't prepared can't be cast. Understood. All right. So we go here. And we'll just rest up. All right, rest will recover all hit points and half your hit dice maximum. So if I've lost hit dice for some reason, maybe due to poison or something like that, I'm not sure what exactly would cause me to lose hit dice, um, but okay. Um, so that's fine. We don't have a lot, right? I mean, we're level one wizard. Um, so that's fine. Uh, Tegan feature uh, upon rest completion. I don't have any spell slots. Um, I think everything's good. I'm just going to start the long rest. I don't think we need to do anything else. Prepare spells. All right. Ah, okay. So this is where we got it. I wanted to make sure that somewhere in this rest action, it told us about that. So we have sleep, fog, mage armor and thunder i think that's probably pretty good most of the time and then obviously cantrips we always have i was kind of thinking about maybe taking thunder wave um for this instance but i think we'll be okay um i'm gonna go ahead and validate the four that we have and we'll close there that's fine all right escape from the orc hideout and that means that they left so now we can crawl through the hole the gap whatever let me zoom in a little bit here Crawl under there. And out we go. I wonder what our rogues uh, story is gonna be. Sure I would have slept so close to a horde of orcs. Orcs have a very distinctive stink. I'm beginning to think Lord Karen might be a mythical creature. We've all <laughs> told a tale of our travels here. All but one of us. Yes, but I have a good reason for that. It's none of your bloody business. Come on now, don't be a killjoy. <laughs> we all sang for our supper. Your turn. Fine. You want to know the truth? I stopped on the way here to visit an old friend of mine and discovered he was up to his eyeballs in debt with a lone shark. Oh, that's not good. Indeed. He put up a family heirloom as collateral and wanted me to reacquire it because you see, I can be quite stealthy when necessary. Yes, hopefully. That's the plan. This game is so good so far. It's so good so far. All right. Recover the, the stolen gem. All right, so. All right, as cautious, use cautious uh, mode to move stealthy. Enemies can hear you. Uh, your noise circle depends on your armor type and your stealth skill. Also, it's a good idea to avoid moving into an enemy's field of view while carrying a light source. All right. Uh, that's kind of what we said last adventure. Um, you must make a spell attack if you attempt an object interaction while within hearing range of an enemy, such as opening a door, chest, or even pickpocketing, and you remain undetected only if you succeed. Cautious mode also allows you to find and follow tracks. Okay, so we're going to go cautious because we know that's what we want. All right, let's start sneaking around. Okay, so there's, there's something right there. So I wonder if that's the audible deal for it. I don't know. All right, right click to drag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, we already did that. Understood. I just want to loot the container. Not quite sure why I did that. Oh, it gave us some thieves tools. Okay, that's fine. Um, do they stack? No. Okay. Good to know. But they do not. Liam, always thoughtful. Yep. All right. So the question now is, I assume that's where we want to go. See if we can find a door. Into the fort. Oh, there's tracks there. Okay. Like that. Okay, so we can... 
Okay, so we can kind of sneak in this way. It looks like we just want to go there. Yeah, that door's not openable. Okay. To try picking a lock, mouse over lock, door, chest, and left click. If you select your whole party, the most skilled characters are automatically chosen for the test. You must have fools pack thieves tools. I don't know what I was trying to say there. I think in your pack, and it all kind of got jumbled together. In your inventory to try picking a lock. Being proficient with thieves tools will help. And we are, right? So if we um, if we hit I and we go into our character here, um, recover the stolen gem, all right. Um, you can see right there, we've got rogue uh, weapon, rogue tools. Um, and in proficiencies, we should have tools, poisoner's kit and thieves tools. In crafting, we should see poisoner. So we've got everything. Oh, and he can do scrolls as well. Oh, he's not proficient. Um, so the only thing we don't really have is this one. Okay, that's cool. Um, and it automatically used it because I'd already clicked the door. Um, it was a DC of 10. We rolled a 22, all told. Proficient with sleight of hand, you can attempt to pickpocket enemies and NPCs. Certain armors gives you disadvantage. Uh, always risk something twice. All right. So we are wearing armor. Um, so we could potentially... Pick that guy's pocket. I think that's what we're supposed to do. I think that's what they're hinting we should do here. So we want to not... Oh, hold on, hold on. Which way are they looking? That way and that way. Hmm. I'm going to do a quick save here. There we go. She walked in. Okay. I've been playing a little bit of uh, Partisans, so I'm getting used to watching where people are looking and stuff. So we're going to come up here. We're going to try a little sneak here. Slide of hand. We rolled a nine plus five. We get the golden key. Okay. I'm going to come back this way. No, 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 no. This way. Okay. I think that's okay. So I'm guessing we need to go down here. No. Go this way. I don't want you walking up that way. I don't know where he was going. It was a little bit annoying. Maybe he was going to walk around that way or something. So pay attention when you're stealthing. All right. And there's the... Uh, I can't get through that door. There's a there's an archway there, though. Okay. They path a little bit weirdly. Can't sneak through here. All right. We rolled well again. Although we have the key, so I don't know... Maybe that's not the, what that key's for. Ah, uh, okay, here we go. I wonder if the key would have got us in a door there that it didn't show, I mean, it didn't give us the option, but it might be a bug or it might be, I just, maybe the key's for the chest it's in, not for the actual door to get in. All right, we've got a trap of some sort. Okay, to disarm a trap, you must first detect it. If you try to open or lock, pick a chest with a trap you haven't detected, you only find out when you trigger it. Yeah. Uh, mouse over, left click. You'll need to make a successful deck check. All right. Thieves tools will help. Some traps can only be disarmed by triggering them. If you fail to disarm a trap, you may trigger it or lock it or simply need to try again. Okay. We rolled a six, but we get a plus seven, which was enough. Okay. Okay, there's the there's the chest we need. There we go. I think the first one probably used the key, but it didn't give us a message of it. I mean, it gave us a sound, but it didn't say, hey, you unlocked the door using the golden key or something like that, which would have been nice. Um, because I was kind of like, what did I do it? What's going on? There's our encumbrance, by the way. They have mentioned that. Uh, we haven't really looked at it yet, but there it is. Uh, that's our poisoner's kit. Okay. We're doing okay. Escape from the fort. Any windows we can open? No. 
Not that I can see anyway. It's the door we, the window we came in, I guess. Um, how do you normally get out of this room? I guess stairs over here. No? Yes, there's stairs there. Okay, I was gonna say, how do you supposed to do? I mean, how do they get in and out without climbing through a window? Now we've got people there. Oh, okay. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. I wonder if they have a different story for each class. So no matter what class you have, you get a story specific to them. I bet you they do. Uh, I mean, that's just, that just makes sense, right? There you are, you filthy crook. You, what? You're drunk. Get out of here before I kill you. Think you scare me? Not anymore. A grave mistake. Oh, uh-oh. Sometimes over the course of your adventure, some non-player characters may become critical. This means if you let them die, the game is over. If you attack an enemy while undetected, you gain the advantage of surprise. That means that you have advantage on your roll to hit, and your opponent cannot react. If you're a rogue, your attack will be a sneak attack, dealing additional damage. All right. So we are going to... We got initiative. Actually, our buddy got the highest initiative. No, actually, that's the bad guy, the lone shark. I'm sorry. It was the red dice. So, I could potentially, I think, switch to the... I'm going to F5 this real fast. Quick save. If I switch to that, can I then shoot him from here? Um, click to attack the target with disadvantage. Because he's in lone, dim sight? I should have advantage, I would think, because I have advan um, elevated. Oh, now I can't switch back. Um, does F8 load? All right, well, we're going to load. We're learning. All right, so that's the... It'd be nice if you could go back and forth till you did something, right? You're like, ah, oh, do I want that shot? No, it's going to give me disadvantage. Let me go back. I didn't do anything with it, so the switch doesn't count type of thing. Um, that might be nice, but I, I really don't have a huge problem with it. Um, it just means you have to you have to figure things out and not be scared to reload if it does what you want, doesn't want. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. Okay, so we're going to sneak down. Um, we're still incautious. All right, that's the end of our turn. Yeah. We can't do anything else, so I, right? Because we can't, we can't hit him there. So we're gonna end our turn. Our buddy attacks, doesn't do anything. Round two, do we get another initiative? Oh, he got 18. Oh no, we just stick with our initiative. Whatever we got initially, we get. Um, so I'm gonna move to here. Should be enough to get me backstab. We're undetected in theory. Hit Alt. Attack. Click to attack the target with disadvantage. Why are we getting disadvantage? Proficiencies. Do we not have any sort of... Character. We do not. Okay. Okay, that's fine. You never stood a Did we roll two 20s for our, for our disadvantage? Well, I'm sure... I'm sure that's a scripted role. Um, Are you four here to see Lord Karen? All right, I think we've seen our four individual characters. Um, according to OBS, I've been talking for 54 minutes so far to get through those. I think this is a great spot to start. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're enjoying Solasta, Crown of the Magister, so far. And we'll be back next time with the actual beginning of the campaign. Uh, it's going well so far. It really, really is. We'll see you next time. Cheers.